Hello everyone and welcome to my ultimate beginner's guide for Dead Frontier 2. Now there's going to be a lot of information to cover in this video so there'll be timestamps in the description below so you can skip to a certain part of the video. So anyway guys, let's get on with the video. Alright, so you're on Dead Frontier 2, the first thing I'm going to highly recommend to you is just when you get into the game, press escape, go to settings, right at the top here in this first section, remove screen shake. I honestly have, I, let me show you what screen shake does. Feel that shake when I shoot? It just removes that. So we're going to take that off, screen shake, boom. Much better, loads better. Go back into settings, come down, and we're going to go just past these now, past the graphic settings, and right here, and untick movie bars, and that will give you a full screen of the game so you can see everything properly. And just, they're, they're the main two that I highly advise. Also, if you do want to make your game a lot brighter like mine, or you'll also get a bit of an FPS boost, but if you do want to make your game brighter, can show you my settings now honestly i'd highly recommend copying my settings it's going to make it so you can see everything a lot easier and just make the game honestly a lot better to play um there is a setting called lighting i highly advise not unticking that unless you're struggling with fps if you're struggling with the fps unticking lighting will literally double your frames but i like to leave it on because the game looks like trash when it's off so if you want your game just to look a little bit brighter, just untick what I've got unticked and your game will run fine. V-Sync, movie bars, and just scroll down, you know, just copy my settings here. <coughs> Boom, that's my settings, and honestly the game is so much easier to play, so much better to play. But yeah, just make sure you definitely do the first two screen shake movie bars. Make sure to get them untucked. Honestly, they just ruin the experience. But yeah, that's the settings. Alright, so you've got your settings sorted. You're probably wondering what to do. So there's three safe zones on the map. Press M to use your map. You've got Dalbo, which is where you'll start if you're a level 1. Averbrook for when you get a little bit higher level. And then Greywood for when you get even higher level. So if you're in Dalbo right now, what you want to be doing is grabbing your missions also world events that you can do to make a little bit of xp and a little bit of cash usually really simple really easy but yeah like you know grab your missions so i'm in um greywood star hotel this is greywood um base and we're just going to run around to these npcs that don't have anything underneath them like you've got crew trader so obviously this guy is for buying and selling equipment to people you've got the um where's the other one the trainer so you want the ones that don't have any yellow writing underneath them. So let's talk to this one. Here we go. Excuse me, my group has a newborn baby. Blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get $779 cash reward and 2325p, uh, 25 experience reward. And you can just talk to them, get your missions. You can also go through the doors. Don't go up the stairs. It's pointless going up the stairs. But not up the stairs. Just through all the first doors in the main hall. So I've got an NPC here, one around there. I'm going to run over to the other door. So let's run over to this side real quick. Another one. Another one. you got the cosmetics trader if you want to buy some Hi. cosmetics. You can always preview them. But yeah. So you want to talk to these, grab all your missions. And then if you want to check, obviously, what your mission is you've got to do. So you're going to go into your inventory. Go to mission log. And you'll have all your missions right here. Also, if we have a look on our map, you can see a little green square here. Point Lake Villas, Villas or whatever. That's where my mission is, so that's where I have to go. I have to find that building. When I get there, the building will show, like highlight itself with the name in green of outside the front door, knowing that. So I know that the mission is there. So when I'll jump into my mission log, I'll be like, right, what do I need to do? Travel to blah 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 blah, and I need to find the formula milk. So then you'll search around for that item, and then you'll come and return it. Now, if you go out and you do multiple missions at once. You can come to the trainer, say if you've got five missions to hand in, There's click on him and hand in missions, and it'll hand in all your missions at once, so you aren't going to run around to every individual person. He'll give you all the XP and all the money, but it will only be NPCs that are in that building, because you can find NPCs out in the world as well. They'll give you missions, so just if you get them, obviously remember where they are. But yeah, that's how you get the missions, that's how you do them, that's just how you get up, set up and everything.
All right, so healing is a big part of Dead Frontier 2. There's dis different negative effects you can get. I don't think you're really going to see them earlier on in the game, but you'll start seeing them as you get later into the game. So I'm going to teach you a little bit about that. I'm going to go to my account stash. You can always find your account stash in each safe zone. I'm going to go down to medicals, and you can see I have some meds. I have antibiotics, bandages, burn kit, these tablets, and paramedic bags. Now... As you can see, the antibiotics will heal me for 18 HP and also cures infection. So if I get bacterial in bacterial infection, which is like from zombies puking on you, this will cure that. So if you, the way you know you have it is when you press tab. One, one, you'll see a red icon on the bottom left corner of the screen. And then two, when you go into your inventory, you'll see the negative effects here. You'll have a red like it'll say infection or whatever you hover over it it'll tell you what you do some of them you lose health like burn damage you take plus 50 percent damage um if you've got a cut you'll bleed to health every minute for that you need a bandage so yeah but let's just have a quick look at the meds so you know what you need to get antibiotics cure bacterial infection bandages cures bleeding burn kits cures like burns obviously and the tablets cure radiation poisoning. And then you can also get painkillers to heal for 30 HP. First aid kits to heal for, I think it's 75 HP. And my personal favorite, then the most expensive one, the paramedic bag, heals for 100 HP. For me, it says 123, but that's because I have some healing um, perks on my character. But it cures bleeding, burns, and bacterial infection. So actually, I think these heal for 15. I think the 18 is a bonus. I think it's 15. But yeah, paramedic bags is the best one that you can get in the game. Obviously, it cures bleeding, burns, and infections. So now you know what you need for <laughs> each type of infection you can get, and obviously how to heal and all that stuff. To heal, all you need to do is have them in your inventory. Click on them. Where is it? Click on paramedic bag. Click use. That's it. Super simple, super easy. All right, so we're going to have a look at the trader now. So each... Uh, safe zone has a trader. Use the trader. All you're gonna do is press E on him. Super simple. Click buying. Now for me, I have a elite sawn off shotgun. We we'll have a look down the list. I can see where is it? Um, under headshot damage, it says ammo type 12 gauge. So I know I need 12 gauge ammo. So I can click buying. Um, go into category. Go down to ammo. 12 gauge, search, and this will always show you the cheapest ones at the very top. So click on it, click buy item, boom. I've just bought 40 shotgun shells for my Sonoff shotgun. And that's how you're going to buy ammo. Obviously, you're going to need to go do some missions and stuff to earn some money. I'm just going to teach you how to do the basics so you know what you're actually doing. But yeah, that's how you're going to get ammo. You can also sell stuff here if we click sell in. We can go down to your 12 gauge and we can click sell. And this will always be for ammo and meds. This will always be the best price. Like, this would be one dollar cheaper than what the other person's selling it at. So, usually, like, you just straight away, like, don't even come up with a price. But then, stuff like clothing and stuff like that, like this Manberg 590M that I've got, this has plus 31 health, plus 22% mutated damage. So, for this, I'd want to go sell. This would be to sell it at the absolute cheapest, but mine has some pretty good stats, so obviously I'd want to put in what I think it's worth. It's not worth that much. <laughs> but yeah, so if you also... Uh, the best thing to do with a lot of this stuff, because uh, you do get a lot of junk. Trust me, 99% of the stuff you find is going to be junk. No one's going to want it. If you just want to, you know, make a bit of money from it and you know no one's going to buy it, hit that scrap button and I'll get $560. So even if you find something and you don't think it's worth anything, take it anyway. And you can scrap it. So yeah, that's how the trader works. Now we're going to get on some loot embossing and all that other good stuff. Real quick, before we get onto the loot embossing, I'm just going to teach you the buttons for your abilities. So yeah, let's have a look at that. All right, so a couple of the perks the character does have. So you can sneak around by holding left control. I'm going to be teaching you a couple of buttons right now. I don't know why I didn't say if I had to start. But yeah, you can sneak with left control. And if you can get behind a zombie with melee... You can hit them for surprise damage, which is a lot of damage compared to your normal hit. We have a look at my sledgehammer that does 8.98 body damage and 33 surprise damage. That's a lot. That is a lot. It does a lot more. That will one-shot most zombies in the game. So yeah, you can always sneak up on them and bop them. 
Also, you have a kick. Now, the default button, for some silly reason, is left alt. I have changed that to F, personally, because it's right next to me. And obviously, this is good for if you've got a gun in your hand and you get pinned in a corner, you know, you just pop, knock them all back, and then carry on shooting or start moving around. You also can use spacebar for dodging. So if a zombie goes to puke on you, let me see if I can get you an example real quick. Try and find a puker. I can dodge these most of the times, but sometimes you just don't see it coming if the light behind you or whatever. But you can listen to the sounds, sometimes you'll hear it. You're a puker. No, you would have puked by now, I reckon. Just pull a bunch of zombies together. One of them will puke on me, surely. Come on, someone go blah. No, no pukers. Oh, there we go. Click that dodge button and you're all good. See, you've just got to be ready for it. It does have a recharge rate, as you can see on the bottom left side then. Dodge through it. Boom, all good. No damage. Oh, we didn't, I didn't have me uh, dodge charge up because it didn't charge up fast enough. Obviously, you can get bonuses to that. But that's if you go towards that. Like, if you, you know, level into it. So you've got left control for crouch. Left alt for kick. And then space for dodge. You can also hold left shift for sprinting. So yeah, they're your like little ability type things. Alright, so you know how to do most of the basic stuff. You've sorted your settings out. You know how to get ammunition. You know what you need to do to heal. Zombies. There's a lot of zombies in Dead Frontier. I'm pretty sure you guessed that there's a lot of zombies in Dead Frontier too. The best thing to do with any zombie, as you should know if you're playing a zombie game, shoot it in the head. <laughs> that is the simplest thing I can tell you. Shoot it in the head. Always shoot them in the head. It's a zombie. What happens if you don't shoot it in the head? You're not going to do as much damage. Look, even that survived a close range shot from my sawn off shotgun. Shoot it in the head. Super simple. Or if you're using melee, oh, he puked on me. Then, you know, you can pop off with your melee. Now, a tip for melee. A good way when you're low level, you're very slow at swinging. Whenever you swing, you're going to take a step forward. So I'm going to show you how to take a step backwards. All you're going to do, very simple, is you're going to hit him and spin as you're swinging. Hit and spin. Hit and spin. They're going to get knocked back and you're going to take a step backwards. Late game, you won't need to do this. If you're a melee user, I am not... I have a little bit of melee skill, I have melee expert 5, but I'm not built into it, like I don't have attack speed and stuff on my clothing and equipment. I'm not really a melee user, it's just a backup weapon. So, hit and spin, hit and spin, every time. Okay. So, you now know how to do just about everything in the game to survive. So, we're going to get on to looting. Looting, obviously, is super, 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 super simple. Go into a building and loot. So, I'm going to run into this building real quick. Now, majority of rooms will have two lootable things in. Some will only have one. Every now and then, you'll have none. So if I go in here, I reckon there's going to be two lootables in here. Get rid of these. Alright, there's only one in here, unfortunately. So, that was a bad call. Have a quick search. Boom. Travel first aid kit. I forgot that. I forgot that even existed, to be fair. I ain't seen one in a long time. <laughs> Going to this, this will definitely have two in. Definitely. Definitely. Wow. Oh, no, yeah, there is two, there is two. Dodge that. Alright, let's save some time. 
So my your searching will be a lot so a uh, lot slower than mine, like a lot slower. But that's just because I have. If you have a look, I have loot free, and then I also have a couple of searching on my items, whichever one it is. Or did I get rid of them? Search speed on my helmet, thirty percent. So yeah, your searching will be a lot slower than mine. Grass key. Yep, so most buildings will have, well, every building will have some locked rooms. The smaller ones will have, like, one locked room. The bigger ones will have, you know, more in, <laughs> depending on the size of the building. Now, obviously, now you know how to loot, so you're going to get one, two, like, zero, one, or two. Majority of the time, it's two per each room, so you just want to go around looting. Don't forget, you can press M to look on your map. This will also show you what rooms you've been in. If I go through this door here, then this will show me that room. So we're going to go upstairs and we're going to find this locked door. Click on that. Boom, we're in. Now, locked doors will always have a better... A, a no okay item. So you'll always get a superior, rare, elite, or unique. You'll never get a damaged or common item in a locked door. So let's search this body. These usually only have one thing in as well. Superior, surgical mask. I don't want that, that sucks. But yeah. Now, last one. Boss rooms. So, boss rooms will always have these little red markers. Question marks, sorry. Because you don't know what's in there. You don't know what boss is in there. Ah. So we're gonna have a quick look what's in here. We got our normal fingers, super easy boss. And we are boss, you're always gonna get a rare and sometimes it's like, I think it's like a 5% chance of an elite. So we're gonna do that real quick. This is not a difficult boss. I'll be doing I've already got guides for all the bosses in the game, but I am going to remake them because they're a bit outdated now. I'm trying to hit that worm. I don't know why. I'm going to shoot it. There we go. Super easy. I'm only in a low level area. Like, I'm only in a level 20 area. As soon as you go to level 25 and 30, everything gets a lot tougher. Get this real quick. Rare, rare woolly gloves. So, the reason this was like, you're probably thinking that was a boss, really. I, I'm max level. I'm level 30, prestige free. Um, there is going to obviously be more levels coming to the game. But yeah, that's that's how you're going to loot up. You're going to you know, do, do your bosses and stuff. Obviously, for me, I cannot... I can't find a level 30 item in a level 20 area boss. Like, for me to go get level 30, guaranteed 30 drops off of bosses, I need to go to the level 30 zone and do the much, much more difficult bosses in the game. But yeah, that's um, that's that's about it for my guide, to be fair. Like, I think I've covered quite a lot. Like, the, the basics to, you know, get you started in the game. So... Yeah, I, I, I think this video is alright. If it, if, it, if it helped, make sure to drop a comment. Make sure to drop a like. If, you know, it helped you out at all, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell notification for future content on this game and games like this. And, uh, yeah, I hope the video helped. I'll catch you in the next one, guys. Good luck, zombie slaying. Peace out.